Welcome back to the lecture series in bioenergetics. So, today is our eighth lecture, so <coughs> or the third lecture of the second week, week two, lecture three, W two L three, and this is our summary sheet wise. This is our lecture eight. Okay, so. In the last class, if you remember, we talked about the concept of the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes and how we introduce this simple concept that cells and their organizational assemblies could be defined in terms of their energetics, in terms of their energy requirements and how come some of the cells are capable of harvesting energy, whereas the others are not. Okay. So, now as a follow up, we will talk about the classification of some of the ancestral prokaryotes, which in the chemical synthesis or chemosynthesis will help you to understand. So, ancestral prokaryotes. So, there are different people, some write it is not K or as C, so do not get confused. So, ancestral prokaryotes could be classified into two groups. One group is the archibacteria, archibacteria which is a prokaryotes and then you have U bacteria ok. Now, archibacteria could be classified into three different groups. First is anaerobic bacteria living in the hot acid conditions or sulfur bacteria essentially. anaerobic bacteria living in hot sulfur conditions. If you remember in the first week, I have mentioned about some of these. These are those bacteria which are source for sulfur bacteria. So, these are source for some extraordinarily stable DNA molecules ok. And lot of these polymerases are TAC polymerases and all these things are isolated from these kind of bacteria which could withstand high temperature and are very powerful tool for all sorts of molecular biology activities. So, that also brings us to a very interesting aspect what uh, I kind of missed out to highlight is life could evolve. We always say life evolved like you know life survives better within say 47, 48 or 50 degrees centigrade. But apparently it looks like that uh, as more and more our un understanding is kind of getting into uh, play, we are realizing that life can evolve under very harsh and harshest of the harshest conditions. So, it is not that life uh, always needs a very optimal temperature, because whenever I kind of read about this uh, anaerobic bacteria living in the hot sulfur springs and all, that always strikes me that you know they can even live at a higher temperature. So, it means uh, stability of biological molecules is not really that optimal temperature, it can survive at a much much higher temperature provided we know, we understand how these biological molecules are designed to survive that temperature. This is just a thought what I wanted to highlight that because under the hot situation you always have a very powerful 
energy in terms of thermal energy. And biology has learned to utilize this kind of thermal energy. Of course, here we are not talking about the thermal synthesis, we are mostly talking about the chemical synthesis and light dependent synthesis which is a photosynthesis, but there could be something like a thermal synthesis essentially where you are utilizing the heat energy to you know develop compounds. Okay. So, this was the first one in that list of anaerobic bacteria. The second one is the bacteria living in extreme salt conditions. Bacteria living in extreme salt conditions because why this is very important I will explain you. These are called extreme halophiles. The reason being under such situation the osmotic pressure is very very high because your solute concentration is amazingly high. So, you have to utilize a lot of energy to you know balance out that kind of osmotic pressure. Otherwise, suppose I put something in a very high salt concentration it is going to collapse. In order for it not to collapse because osmotic pressure will be so high because solute is going to put a lot of pressure onto the membrane. In order for these bacteria not to collapse it needed to develop some mechanism. So, it again seems like as I was telling you about thermophiles, it again seems like nature can develop molecules by utilizing the energy available under any harshest of the harshest conditions. It is just we are yet to understand where is the limits of nature. What we say is the most optimal condition does not seems like the more we are understanding about this prokaryote, it looks like that the story is much, much more in depth and much, much more complicated than what we believe as the most optimal conditions. Like two examples I cited, hot water springs, cited about extreme halophiles where we have lot of energies available in terms of osmotic pressure, osmotic forces, thermal forces and you know they survive. So, the third in that line what I wanted to highlight is the anaerobic bacteria that reduce CO2 to methane then methanogens, they are also called methanogens or the anaerobic bacteria converting CO2 to methane. So, in other words if you look at this reaction what is happening is that there is some form of a reduction which is happening there is an addition of and reduction essentially means you are needing electron. Now, you try to correlate when I was taking we have to talk about lot of these free energy changes and everything and so, you need in this whole process a uh, way to supply electrons. Most of these reactions if we talk about CO2 making carbohydrates. CO2 to say just just for your understanding sake do not take that this bacteria can do that. Say uh, if I talk about carbohydrates, so I am taking the liberty to introduce something here. So, this means this is the reduction reaction C 6 H 6 right carbohydrate the first glucose molecule. Okay. So, then that means so you see of course, there are O H groups and all these things are attached. So, what I wanted to say the carbohydrate itself is a reduction reaction process. 
and for the reduction to happen you needed an infinite source of electron. Keep this in mind because this will come very handy. This energetics is driven by the search of infinite source of electrons. Keep this fundamental concept in mind. This will come very, very useful. Okay. So, I just took this liberty to you know just move you out and do not mix it up with this, this, this is totally on a different concept it is and I will come later on to that. Okay. So, these are the three archibacteria we talked about and what about the eubacteria? About the eubacteria, there are gram positive bacteria. These are mostly the all the modern day, the family relationship between present day bacteria indicating the probable path of evolution and the origin of prokaryotic cell what we are talking about. Okay. So, we have gram positive bacteria we have green photosynthetic bacteria anaerobic green so now you see how we are evolving green photosynthetic bacteria and this is an anaerobic one so it means this is not evolving oxygen. Then you have cyanobacteria which is blue green algae. Which is blue green algae. You have purple photosynthetic bacteria. purple photosynthetic bacteria, then you have spirochetes. So, here comes the first of what we are talking about photosynthetic systems and that too in an anaerobic world. So, it means what are those compounds which help it to synthesize or do a photosynthesis. Then comes cyanobacteria or blue green algae, then comes photosynthetic purple photosynthetic bacteria. So, if you look at the evolution here very carefully, you have anaerobic bacteria which is surviving in hot spring possibly using as an energy source, energy source must be some form of sulfur compounds, okay. energy rich sulfur compounds may be the sources. Then you have evolving through you are having methanogens which are using simple compounds like carbon dioxide to make reduced it to methane and maybe further. So, this is possibly, possibly they are doing some form of chemical synthesis and such situations, such could be further extrapolated to hydrothermal vents. We will go back to this soon about the hydrothermal vents and the story of it. But then as we move to the eubacteria, so essentially this is how the evolution has happened with respect to time. These are the primitive oldest And as they move, you started seeing light dependent synthesis, photo, photo, 
for 2. So what I wanted to highlight is light dependent synthesis or photosynthesis aspects came much later possibly as compared to the thermal or chemical synthesis. So that brings us to a very interesting th world of why there is so much interest in understanding life form in geysers, hot water springs, in places like deep sea hydrothermal vents. These are extreme situations and these are situations where there is no light. So if life has to evolve, life is totally dependent on the physical, in terms of physical energy, it is the heat energy and some of those energy sources are some of those sulfur rich compounds and this is what brings us to that iron sulfur world. So there was one question which was asked that what are the other theories as a matter of fact there is not very many theories there actually there is none if you say which is kind of to critique because most of the biology starts so the way the most of the biology starts is here. If we go back and to the Uri Miller experiment, this is where. So most of the biology, it is believed after this. So some of those very interesting molecules are formed because after the Uri Miller, like in a kind of Uri Miller, where Uri Miller tried to emu emulate the primitive earth, they say the nucleotides were formed, the nucleotide becomes self-assembled and then somewhere or other the cell membrane was formed and then this nucleotide went inside the cell membrane and it is kind of a assumption itself is that the cell form much later and it is kind of a bit chaotic out there. It is not that I am critiquing, it is just does not make real sense. So there is nothing before this in biology. So biology starts with and soon after this if you follow any textbook they will say Uri Miller experiment and then their formation of nucleotide then the self assembly of nucleotide, a nucleotide can give birth to another nucleotide, replication what you learn in biology, replication of nucleotides and replication of nucleotide, nucleotide followed by encapsulation of the nucleotide inside a confined structure but that is where the biology starts. So this is one of the question which uh, my TA asked me that you know someone has asked this question what are the other theories so uh, here uh, for that individual prior to this. Prior to Uri Miller, if somebody says that the only other criticable theory I say, because there are a lot of critiques to that theory is the iron sulfur world. World because, because the reason being now I have another point to highlight is now coming back to today's class what we are talking about this, these kind of bacteria which are surviving in places possibly in places like hydrothermal vent but definitely they survive in geysers, in hot water springs and several places in India if you go there are a lot of hot water springs if you go to Himachal Pradesh there are several places of hot water spring, there is hot water spring close to Delhi, there are hot water spring down south, there are so many places. So if you go to these hot water springs keep this in mind they are all bubbling with life and something which where we cannot survive we are not you know capable of surviving there but yet life does survive. There is a lot of heat energy, there is a lot of sulfur rich compounds and this is where the iron sulfur world comes very critical. So for that individual who asked this question, so this is possibly the most uh, accepted theory currently that and most critiqued theory that possibly the first cell must have formed through the iron sulfur clusters. So coming back where I was I just took a detour. So this is where the chemical and light dependent synthesis starts its journey maybe in those molecules then in those very very primitive organelles which have evolved billions of years ago. So I will close in this class here and in the next class we will talk about 
some of the thermodynamical parameter and order within the cell. Thanks.